perfectly rational explanation because I did that earlier on, didn't I? I did it here and it said it wasn't defined. So you would expect that that might be true. Um, Adrian says define A. So I'm going to have to try and guess what you mean. So you mean I need to tell it what A is. And I might question that. I might say, well, have I not already told it what A is? So an Ash is going to say it'll just display one because it's already stored. So let's see. So when I press enter, we're going to find it out. So here I go, and I'm just about to press the enter key. What you can see, I haven't pressed it yet because I want to wonder what's going on in your head at the moment. Are you thinking, I know what it's going to be? Or are you thinking, hmm, hmm, I'm not so sure. So I'll press the enter key now and find out. OK, and it returns a 1. So Peter and Amina, you pretty much guessed it. So now I'm going to do that a little bit more. So I'm going to assign um, the value of 2 to a variable called B. I'm going to create another variable called C, which I'm going to assign the value of 3 to it. So you would imagine if I type in A, one, B, I'm going to get two. And if I type in C, I'm going to get the value of three. So here I'm now going to ask you to predict. In fact, let's let's just do something else first of all. We can use Python a little bit like a calculator, and I can say what's one plus two, and I can press enter, it comes back with three, and I can say I can use other mathematical operators, like I can use three. Asterisk is the operator, and I can give it something really complicated like a big number like this, and I can even turn it into an in, uh, a floating point number. And I can press enter, and I'm not sure if this is going to work. Oh, and it worked, but it's given it as an exponential because it's, uh, it's a very big number. What else can I do? I can also do 4 divided by 2 because I'm using the divide operator to press enter. And it gives me another floating point number. Now I keep throwing in lots of terms there. A floating point number is a number that has a decimal in it. An integer is a whole number with no fractional parts. Now I've got A, B, C. Okay, so here is something I'm going to ask you to predict. I'm going to ask what A plus B plus C. Oh, my math makes a noise when I do that. And this time I timed it by A. And I want you to predict. What do you think the answer will be when I press enter? And as quickly as you can, type it into the chat. So come on, don't don't linger. Type it in really, really quickly. So got a prediction, you think it's six, so A is one. So, so I might say to somebody like, Helen, now you, I know you got the answer right before, but I might say, why do you think it's six? And then you would say, well, A has got the value of one, B has got the value of two, two plus one is three, plus C, which is three. So you, you go talk it through in times one, and you would say that, wouldn't you? So watch what happens. Ah, Anna thinks it might be twelve. Ah, so I don't know if you notice. There's a, there's a slight delay between me saying things and you hearing it, but I haven't pressed enter yet because I like keep you a little bit in suspense to find out what happens. And it gives the answer six. No, maybe that was too easy. So Anna needs to be going. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, I get it. So let's something a bit more complicated. So A times B in in brackets um, plus two in brackets here. My when I do that, my computer throws a noise out at me. Times two. Oh, no, I'll tell you what, times A, close bracket, and then we're going to have another, I hope you're working this out as we go along, because I'm not, I'm just, can you, I don't know if you can tell, uh, B times A. Okay, so there we go. So in a moment, I'm going to press enter, and I want you to tell me what you think the, yep, Ash is right about bid mass, brackets, indices, decimals. So we've got A, plus 2 would be 4 times 1 is plus b times a. Now John's complaining about something, so is Helen. He said I've done something wrong. Oh, now Anar says it won't work. Now, I think you're actually right. So let's press enter and see. 
oh yes it says b has not been defined so do you know what i need to do i need to go back now little tip here and click on the end of that line and i'm going to press enter again but this time i'm going to go in and I'm going to change it to be like that and just for those people who think that they know everything i'm going to divide everything by two so now predict what's going to happen and you are right and are it is case sensitive Ooh, we've got a mixture of results we've got fours threes fives and what i might do now if i was teaching my class i'd say oh we've got a mixture of opinions here all those people think it's fives threes fours and then i might pick one or two people the sheep the ones who say oh, oh i'll say it's three why do you say it's three and they might go um well and we could talk it through I might say, do you know what, before we find out the answer, just discuss it with your partner for a moment, see what your partner says, because you might change your mind. So, so more threes. So let me press enter to see what we get. Oh, we got five. So only Peter managed to predict five. Yeah, what exactly? Because A times B, so remember, we've got to go brackets, indices, divide, multiply. So... Do you know what? I'm not going to go through all of that now because there will be a reason, a logical reason why that is. Um, I mean, and you can work it all out later. One thing I am going to do is, if you watch what I'm doing with my mouse now, I'm going to select all of this later on. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it into that document that we've been using. So you can go back and you can try this yourself with a class. And this training, I... I I hear people tell me they get the greatest amount of value from these training sessions when they take something, even if it's just one small thing, and then go back and use it with the class afterwards. Because, and it doesn't matter if it's a year 11 business studies class or a year seven IC class, just just get into the habit. A little bit like if I announced to you all, I've heard, I'm, you know, I, I used to run a long time ago, and now I'm thinking about doing a marathon, comic or sports relief or something. And I'm going to do a marathon in two weeks' time. You'd think I was foolish because you'd say to me, I need to build up to something like that. Otherwise, I'm going to injure myself. So I would say this thing to you. Practice a little bit. Now, we're going to make it a bit more complicated because we've got A, B, C. A was 1. B was 2. C was 3. And now I'm going to add another number. Now, this time I'm going to keep it as an integer So it's because integers are whole numbers. So I don't want to add in decimals at this point. So I've got D. So I'm going to have A plus B plus C plus D. And I am putting spaces in between them. So now I'd like you to tell me 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. That should be fairly simple. You should have to work that out, no problem. Uh, it feels like Anna has absolutely no faith in me. He sends me an error. Where C, Amina, you're, you're working it out, aren't you? A is 1, B is 2, C is... What's going on with you? Some are saying 10, some are saying error. 64? 64? 64. So I think, John, you need to go back and uh, look at your maths just a little bit there. Oh, my goodness, all the complaints are coming through. You think typos and all sorts of stuff. That's my doubt. Okay, so I press enter. Oh, see what's happened. It's telling me that what I can't do is I can't add an integer and a string together. Hmm, okay. So now what it's doing is it's telling me I'm mixing up my data types. Now, I didn't tell you we were going to our data types, but I'm just hoping now that you will pick up on a little bit of this. So I'm going to type in the word type. Now, Python... The IDE that I'm using, which is in it, it's recognizing that type has a special significance because watch what happened. It's black, press E, and it goes purple. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put letter A in brackets and then close it. You might have seen a clue there if I try to hide it. I would be asking you now to think what's going to happen when I press enter. Is the letter A going to appear? Is the number one going to appear? What's going to appear on the screen? Unless you've done this before, I'd have a fairly good hunch that you don't know. So you might be thinking and typing it in now. But just so we don't spend all night waiting to type them in, um, I'm going to press enter. So John, you think it's going to be 1? O-N-E, I notice. I know she didn't type in the number 1, which is you know, the thing. So I press enter. Ah, now see what it's done. It's told me that A has a data type. Now, I have a 
suspicion that Amina actually got IDE open on her computer and she's typing it in just to be a bit sneaky because there was a bit of a delay. But anyway, <laughs> so um, you can see it's telling me that A is an integer. Now, let's type that word in just so you see. An integer is a whole number without any fractional parts. So if I do the same thing again, but this time I do this, I type in 1, you would expect it would do the same thing. Now, that's just the tone of my voice I'm saying. You would expect it would do the same thing. I'm not actually saying it will do that, because what I like to do with my lessons is I like to have a little bit of discovery and prediction and guesswork. And um, when I press Enter, it tells me exactly the same thing. So you should be able to tell me if I do 1.0, which you would kind of think is a whole number, you should be able to tell me what you predict. It's going to tell me when I press enter. Now, some people are really fast at typing in. Some people are a little bit slower. So, you, you, Helen, you said one, and you might be right because 1.0 is the same as one. Actually, this might be a float. Now, remember, float is short for floating point. And the, the point that it refers to is the decimal point. So that's what computer science is called decimals. So I'm going to press enter now, and it tells me that it's a float. Now, here is the, here's the question. If I do this and ask it to tell me what D is, I have a prediction now that three of you straight away are going to tell me the correct answer. So I've got one. This two. Peter, can you get it now? Two. Peter. And one other person. So you think it's going to be a string or STR, and there we are. Now, what I hope that you've just learned now is that Python recognizes three different data types. And when you're teaching the GCSE, now I didn't ask you which GCSE you're teaching. I'm assuming that you're teaching OCR GCSE computing. Um, I am. That's, that's the one I've been teaching for the last three years. Children need to know about the existence of integers, floats, and strings. They need to know 